What's up guys, it's Robert, you're watching Gen Style. Today I'm here in Bentonville, Arkansas with Mr. Eric Coons. He is a financial advisor who specializes in annuities and on the side, he is an avid music fan and a music producer and you can find his music on Spotify at Crazy Ups. Eric, good My to brother. be here, bro. My good brother. To, good to finally do this. Yeah, man. We've been talking about getting you on here for a long time. So Eric, just the background, Eric is one of my greatest supporters. Early when I started Gent Style, he was there helping me out. Um, he's since gotten suits from me. He's, he's just the man. He's the man. <laughs> so I'm glad to be here. He's really the guy that got me inspired, like to start really up in my fragrance game. Yeah. So Eric, what do we got here today? What are so, we doing? So what I've compiled, Robert, I've compiled a, a collection of fragrances that I feel are most suitable for fall and winter. Okay. So these are going to be a little bit more on the heavier side of things. Uh, not necessarily like aquatics that you would have in the summer. Yeah. Um, but these are kind of my go-tos. And again, let me preface this by saying these aren't necessarily for everyone. Yeah. Because a lot of these are real head turners. They're really heavy. Yeah. And so, that's my style though, you know that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely his style. So we got, uh, what are these, about 10 bottles here? What is this? I think we actually have 14 okay. and then I just have a sample. Uh, I haven't acquired the Amouage fragrance yet that I want to share with you, so we'll use that one last. But yeah, these are all, uh, most of these are going to be niche fragrances. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the way to go. So you've got like your designer fragrances and then you've got your <clears throat> niche fragrances. All of these here are niche. So you're not going to see like YSL up here. You're not going to see, you know, uh, Invictus Dior, or yeah. Dior. You're going to just see some really like high quality niche uh, brands that might be a little bit less popular, but they put out an amazing product. So let's get in the first fragrance. What do you want to show us? What's a good first like fall fragrance? To start with. So what I'm going to start with, this is my favorite house. So this is actually a Mouage. Uh, the fragrance was actually uh, curated in Oman. Um, the neat thing about a Mouage is they're a heavy um, oil concentrate. So most of their fragrances are like 40 to 50 percent. So they're really heavy. I'm talking two, three sprays max. And the neat thing about a Mouage as well that you're going to find is they're really incense and oud based fragrances. So it's not something you want to apply to your, your clothing. Um, and a lot of times when you do spray, I try to avoid spraying you know, near my neck or anywhere so you yeah. don't get that olfactory fatigue. Yeah. So one, two, three, and maybe on the wrist is yeah. good for me. But what I love about, the first one we have is called uh, Jubilation 25. Uh, and the neat thing about this fragrance is it's, it's really incense based. Another Amouage fragrance that's very comparable to this is called Interlude Black Iris. But the cool thing about Amouage is that just the packaging, the luxury, yeah. this is just like such a lush fragrance. So me. what's what's a bottle of this run? Well, like what's this investment look like if you're if you're trying to get a yes. bottle of this Amouage? Yes. So, these these are not like the cheapest fragrances. No, no. Um, I would say when you're looking at retail for any Amouage fragrance, you're looking at four fifty to five hundred fifty dollars. But what I would say to you, and what I've done in the past. Um, I'm in fragrance marketplace groups on yeah. Facebook. And I've actually got a lot of these brand new in the box for anywhere from 200 to 250. And I have probably 350 fragrances, so I've traded a lot of these yeah. as well too. But I, uh, I've kind of gotten away from designer fragrances because niche is just a, you get a whole a, nother ballgame. Yeah, you get, a, you get a better smell profile. You get, you get stuff that like, you know, me and you, we put on like our niche fragrances. Oh yeah, for and we sure. go out and somewhere and when you smell it, you're gonna be like, "That's yeah. that's unique." You're yeah. not gonna, you're not gonna, they're not gonna say, "Oh, you smell like four or five other guys in yeah. this room." So, I just think that these are really, you know, when you when you when you want to start investing seriously in a good fragrance, this is where you go because you've got crazy performance with all of these. Well, that's and, the thing I love, except uh, for creeds. Yeah, for sure. Another thing I, you know, I always compare fragrances to is like uh, collecting wine. Or bourbon, uh, yeah. Yeah, and some of these don't lose value. Like your fragrance collections don't lose value because what happens is a lot of these will be, you know, released in limited quantities um, and they become discontinued. Yeah. So the value, I mean, you were talking about Invictus earlier, yeah. which is, uh, you know, they have what's called Aqua 2016, yeah. which is such an aquatic fragrance. But that's a designer fragrance, which right now you can find upwards of bottles for three to $400 yeah. a pop, which is crazy yeah. for, a, for a designer. 
Let me smell that one. Let me yeah. see what we're dealing with here. So the funny thing about this too, I see some people holding fragrance strips like this, some mm -hmm. like this, but I, I've just always yeah, you spray it on the yeah, beard. yeah, yeah. So let me get this away from you here because yeah. we need the coffee beans. We're, actually, we really do need coffee. Well, we got coffee over there, so we might bring that over and give that a smell. <laughs> get some Starbucks. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so here you go, my friend. This. Tell me what I'm smelling, because I'm bad about like notes and... Your Amouage fragrances are going to have oud at yeah. the base, right? Yeah. You're going to have some saffron. The saffron helps with the projection of the fragrance as well. You know, the saffron, we think back at Rat Rouge. But the main note in that, you're getting a lot of incense. A lot of incense. Yeah, this, this smells kind of like... You know, like you're in one of those like trippy stores. Middle Eastern, right? Yeah, it's, Middle it's Eastern. got like this, like this, it, this, this, this like sharp smell to it. If you ever go digging for records, I know you and I are vinyl collectors yeah. as well. You'll find incense like lit in a lot of those yeah. old record shops, you know. But the thing that that I could say about this fragrance, and in particular each one of these, you know, it smelled like nothing that I've ever smelled before. So Eric, what is the next fragrance we got here? So. I'm actually wearing this today. Um, let me tell you a little backstory about this fragrance. And again, it's another Amouage. Uh, it's from their Opus line. Uh, it was actually repackaged. And if you look at their bottles, their bottles are just like, feel that thing. That thing's a brick. Yeah, this is this is very sturdy. You guys ought to feel this right now. It's it's so solid. Like yeah. the, the lid is solid. Uh, it's yeah. got this nice magnetic like you, thing to you it. Really it really hurt somebody nice. with that. Yeah, yeah and of could. course they have the like the little, the real little gemstone they put on there as well. but. Uh, the little backstory behind this fragrance, so, and again, let me preface this by also saying these are very expensive fragrances. You could go to Scent Split, uh, Decan X, and get a lot of these fragrances in a decan. Yeah. You know, before you drop 250 to $500 a bottle, go yeah. decan something, get yeah. a 5 ml, because a 5 ml will last you a Least long a time. Yeah. yeah, and you want to, because you want to make sure that before you invest this kind of money in the fragrance, that you're getting something you actually oh, like. for because, sure. Because, like, listen, I, as you know, I absolutely hate patchouli. <laughs> if you guys, I don't know how you guys feel, but if you look up, like, if you get a fragrance that's got patchouli in it, patchouli gives me, like, the worst headache. I can't stand it yeah. at all. It's just a horrible scent, yeah. in my opinion. So yeah. every anything that has patchouli in it, I can't wear it because it, it just sticks out to me. Yeah. So, um, but the, but let me let me continue on. Uh, so I had a sample set of Amouage. So I think there was probably, I think I may have paid five hundred dollars for it. But it had forty different samples mm -hmm. in there. Uh, I think it was only missing a couple from their whole house. But this fragrance really, um, it's a super polarizing, right? So this was one that I would keep downstairs in my production studio. I would always smell it. I would walk by every day and be like, and it's an addictive smell yeah. because this is smoke in a bottle, right? You could, like today, you know, outside, uh, we it's 35 degrees outside. Yeah. So this just really cuts through the cold. But it, this is the smokiest fragrance that I own, and it's heavily oud-based. Yeah, so the oud in this, we, you know, we often talk in times in the fragrance world about like a oud being like very barnyardy and funky. I mean, I actually grew up on a dairy farm, believe it or not. This this is very funky to me. Whew. Yeah, and I'm rocking it today. Like, you, I've wore it twice it's dry, this weekend. It's, I think the dry down has been very nice. Yeah. You know, this is, what I'm smelling on this right now is not uh, what what it, what, I, what you're wearing right now. It's dried down. Oh yeah, for sure, for so, sure. Yeah. So it, the, the, the sweetness comes out as it does dry down. Yeah. And that's another thing uh, to, to think about is like, when you're sampling on paper, when you're sampling in store. Yeah. I mean, there's been plenty of times where I've been, my wife's been buying makeup in Sephora and I've been going through their lines and I'm like, ah. Pass, pass, but when I get in the car, some of it may accidentally hit my wallet yeah. or my phone or my hand. I'm like, wow, that dry down is phenomenal in there. Yeah. And I'll go back and, and cop that fragrance yeah, later on down definitely. the line. But yeah, for me, this this at the moment, Robert, this is like my favorite fragrance yeah. that I own it's at the good. moment. It's yeah. Good. Okay, so let's get into the brief the next one. Okay. Uh, let's let's jump tell me just briefly about it and then let's jump straight into the smell. I want to see what that next one okay. smells like. So tell me about it. Yeah, so this is an actual a US, uh, this is Amrood, right? So this is an actual US based line. So I think they came around, uh, their inception was around 2016. A little backstory to this company as well. So Joma Shop, if you ever heard of Joma yep, Shop line, yep. I've actually bought, I started with their fragrance called Wet Stone mm -hmm. and it actually smells like a wet stone after the rain. Right? It's very salty. Hmm. So I actually bought 
four or five of their fragrances. So I've got this in last week, but this is actually called Oud Du Jour. So a lot of the fragrances on this list that we're speaking of do contain Oud, which was probably one of my favorite new, excuse me, one of my favorite notes. No, yeah. And Oud is like, it's agarwood. It's very expensive. Uh, I think it's around $2,000 for like 50 ml, just of Oud as a note in fragrances. But this is a very light Oud. It's a very beginner Oud. I haven't given this a full wearing yet, but it is a very unique fragrance. That's my favorite out of the, uh, out of the yeah, three so yeah. far. I mean, how would you describe that? It's it's not like it's not a oud that's like overpowering. Like mm -hmm. I think those first two could be overpowering to mm -hmm. some people. This really, I I think this is more of like a kind of like a sandy beach. Really? Yeah, I could. I feel like you could wear this in like hot weather. Let me see it. Let still, me smell that again. Let it's a little bit sweet. Like I think it's just. It's definitely more toned down. It, it, you know where this takes me? Where? Like if I just, it's, you know, you smell mall fragrances sometimes. Yeah. Like you walk by Abercrombie and Fitch. And you get you a walk, whole whiff of, yeah. So, but I don't want to compare it to that, but it's almost like you're shopping at like a Saks and you yeah. walk into their, you know, they have all their cashmere sweaters. Yeah. Like, this is what, this is what I would wear in the wintertime with like a nice cashmere sweater. Yes. You get that vibe? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good that's a good way of yeah. putting it. Yeah, I you're, love it. You're good at describing these. So let's You gotta let's, go heavy handed on that one though. Okay. You gotta go heavy handed. Let's 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 talk about the next one. Okay. So this next one, you know, I, I one of the things that I like to do here in the office, if it's just me and not my business partner in here, we'll we'll let fragrance reviewers just yeah. we'll let it stream just, on, just the, on, on the, the TV, on the frame yeah. TV all day. But one of the fragrance reviewers that I respect is Aaron's Terrence Hughes. So he just does fragrance reviews. He doesn't do the the panty droppers or the list, which you yeah. know I don't I don't want to necessarily do in the long run either. Yeah. But he put me onto this one. So this is a, a very luxurious. Um, this is a very luxurious line, but it's called Bodicea the Victorious. Some of their fragrances get up around Robert. I'm not kidding you. Around two three grand a bottle. This is a wild bottle. Yeah. This just looks like it's expensive. And yeah, you have to like show them the front of that, classy. like get in the detail in there, yeah. and even on the look at the oh uh, the lid the cap. too. Yeah, the cap even yeah. is is really bold. Yep. So I br I brought this because I know you love rose fragrances, right? <laughs> right. Rose is. Like I mean, just my look favorite. at the, look at the juice in that. Yeah. So, this and is, that's yeah. The juice in there that. is. Look at this. Yeah. So this is almost like. As it ages, some of this juice darkens, yeah. right? So I got this literally a year ago, but Aaron's Taren Hughes put me onto this. And I think I ended up getting this for a shade under $200 on Joma Shop, because Joma Shop will run like half off sales. So yeah. you have to constantly check that out. But this one is called Ardent. So this is Rose yeah. on steroids. And this isn't, you know, Kevin Samuels, you and I used to watch yeah. him, high value man, rest yeah. in peace, right? But he loved rose fragrances. So he speaks highly of Portrait of a Lady. Yeah. AKA Portrait uh, of a Man. We, I, we smelled that one this morning and I just. Nah, it smells it like was, my grandma. Yeah, but. It, was, it was too feminine for me. Ah, uh, and it's so sweet, but it's that just. That smelled good from the bottom. Up. Let me see this. Yeah. So when, with rose fragrances, in my opinion, you can have like, something that's too like feminine mm -hmm. of a rose scent. Right. Cause you know, when you think of like a rose scent, you think of like, oh, this is something that a woman would wear. But this rose, it's so complex that right. it's like, it's definitely something that a man could wear and it still has rose. Like I love that. What's that one cheaper? Toy Boy, Machino Toy Boy. That's niche quality, bro. That is that... an amazing, it's a designer fragrance, but, but it, it could be on this list. We it could literally be it on could this hang list. With this list. And then the, the clone of, uh, so that, you're talking of Atomic Rose. I think it's called an Infinity Rose. Did yeah, clone? Infinity yeah. Rose is another good clone of Atomic mm -hmm. Rose. Um, but those all are just like amazing rose notes in there. And yeah. they're all slightly different. Because if you go, if you get like the Tom Ford Rose right. fragrance, that's too feminine. Yeah, but you, you got to wear the fragrance. You can't let the fragrance wear you. That's the way I look at it. That's I mean, a, I, That's a good way of looking at yeah, it. Yeah, you just, yeah. Just, I mean, if you're dressed like... You and I are dressed in suits most of the time. Um, this is not something you would necessarily wear to, I think this is like not even a first date fragrance. I think this is like a third or a fourth date yeah. fragrance. You know, let the woman get a little bit comfortable with yeah. you. 
before you polarize the rate out of the yeah. gate. Because, you know, this is a this will leave a lasting first impression. It definitely will. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Man. Well, let's uh, let's talk about the next fragrance. So, okay. Well, what is, you know what is, this one. You know this one. I know this one? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've decanted oh, that for you. Guys. The booziest fragrance that I own. Guys, this Pure one. Pure booze. You don't even need to spray it. Don't even spray it. Oh, you're right. Yeah, don't even spray it. Yeah. This right here, that one, Coute, this Coute. By Unique E Luxury. And this fragrance, is, oh. this brand is known for just, you know, you see Beast Mode fragrance list all over the internet, yeah. right? This thing just. So put, let me tell you guys yeah. a story. So Eric, a couple months ago, sent me, <laughs> he sent me this, uh, like oh, these two different fragrances to sample. And he gave me like some 10, 10 milliliter decants of these. This one right here, I sprayed it on at seven o'clock in the morning. At 11 o'clock at night, after a shower, it smelt the exact same. Oh, it dried man. down just a little bit. That right there literally lasts, and don't spray it on your clothes. No, If you spray no, it on no, no, your no. clothes, you will never be able to get the smell yeah, out. The juice on this is actually, it's yellow. You could look at it and tell it's like, oily and thick and serious yeah. like that is that's I wouldn't you say that's the strongest fragrance on this that's list? that's a good point that's a good point you segue into this because a lot of these so you have eau de toilettes yeah which is like a light yeah you right that's like eau de toilet like you don't want to <laughs> use those and then you it's have horrible. eau de parfum yeah which is a better. little bit more but these this is an extrait yeah so an extrait they're constant they're just so uh, powerful yeah. but you know I know just in continuance what Robert was saying is I have a three-story house so downstairs I you know Robert and I caught a workout downstairs and what yeah. I call the ghetto we have an unfinished basement downstairs where we do a lot of power lifting but sometimes you know just to kind of like I'll, I'll sample fragrances between sets because I have my fragrance closet right there but I could spray one spray of this and my wife could smell this in the shower yeah. on the second floor. Yeah. It's there all day. Yeah. This is the most powerful fragrance that I own and it is booze, pure booze in a bottle. What's like, the this price, is What's the price point on that? You won't find Unique Luxury. Uh, you'll really have to search Joma Shop or Fragrance Net or look at some pre-owned, but man, they I really want to explore this line. I think I got this maybe around two hundred dollars. A lot of these that I brought um, I really got a new one two years ago. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm not yeah. paying full retail for this, but yeah, there's no need to spray this. But if you like boozy fragrances, this is. I haven't worn it yet. I'm I'm scared to wear it. I've worn it. <laughs> it stay. It, it lasts all day. Like yeah. it's ridiculous. So yeah. uh, let's let's get into yeah probably one of my favorite more favorite houses of fragrances. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about these colons you got here. Yeah, well, uh, actually, so, well, I'm oh, sorry about careful. that. So this is actually uh, by Killian. So or, this, yeah, Killian, yep. sorry. So this is called Back to Black. So he is actually, um, his bloodline, this comes from the makers of Hennessy, the drink. Yes. Okay. So the thing about Back to Black, and you're from, you live in Indianapolis, yeah. right? We're here in Bentonville, Arkansas, filming this. We're looking at Walmart home office right across the street there, but... I actually do some speaking engagements in Indianapolis once in a while when my wife and I were doing some shopping. We stayed an extra day, we stayed at Saks. And this was my first endeavor into the Killian line. It's a good start. Yeah, Back to Black is just, and I have so many memories like with my wife just associated with this fragrance. But this was this is probably like a top five of all yeah, time for me. definitely. Um, but it is definitely a winter scent. Let me see that. How would you describe this? Because, now this let, is me, the, let me actually put yeah, this on strip. Yeah, spray that on a strip. Because, this is, because the, other, the other one here, I know, I know I like that other one probably a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, this one's really heavy. So another funny story about this, this is actually called Back to Black. This was named after, you know, rest in peace, Amy Winehouse had an album called Back to Black. Yeah, right? great album. Yeah. Well, your boy Salam Remy did the production, yeah. he did the Fuji stuff, yeah. so yeah, great album. How would you describe that? This is so like dark and heavy. Mm -hmm. How's the performance on that one? Killian fragrances are kind of in the middle. I would say yeah. anywhere from that six to eight hour range. It's yeah. not necessarily beast mode. Um, and their bottles are just beautiful as well. I like that they keep the aesthetic with yeah. all their bottles. Yeah. Uh, a sign from the line, the angel share line. Yeah. The notes on this, I mean, what do you get? What, what's this, what do you get out of this though? Like it's hard, this one's so hard for me to describe, but I, this is a top five of all time for me. 
Yeah, I, it's, it's hard to describe. I know it smells good. I know it's very heavy. It's in many ways, it's a little bit, it's just a lot of these fall ones you gotta be careful with because they're really, they're really strong. Right. I think when when that dries down, yeah. that's that's gonna be perfect. I honestly could not tell you the note. Like, let me just, I'm curious. I yeah. gotta Google and see. This is, and, and that's what makes these so unique, right? You'll watch a lot of fragrance reviewers and you talk about the notes, but our olfactory perception is gonna differ. You know, things that sound that smell good on your skin necessarily yeah. aren't gonna smell good on my skin and my body yeah. chemistry as well. Yeah, and you gotta, you gotta. that's why it's good to sample things and yeah. try things out because you really gotta yeah, find, you know, what works for you. Again, great fragrance. I can't tell you anything about it because it's phones connected to the camera, but. Boozy, um, boozy for it's sure. It's very boozy. But yeah. there's nothing that, and this is what makes it, that, that makes these fragrances, you know, stand out, is they just, you can't compare them to something else. Yeah. There's a lot of fragrances that I have that, you know, are very similar, right? Yeah. But I look for things that smell like nothing else that I own. Yeah, that's and this, very And unique. this is absolutely one of them. So this next one <laughs> Pure is. coffee. Coffee, coffee, a coffee. classic yeah. gourmand fragrance. <coughs> Excuse me. So a gourmand fragrance, tell that, them briefly what a gourmand fragrance is. I'm gonna spray this yeah. one. It's one of my favorites. You know, another, the, the most gourmand fragrance I've ever smelled is uh, New Harlem from Bond Number no. 9, which unfortunately I'm not a big Bond Number no. 9 fan. They but just don't last. Pancakes and waffles, man. But this is actually a strong, I get a, a coffee note in there. I mean. This to me smells like coffee, caramel, that that bottle's like one of my go-tos in the yeah, fall. This is... It's a major compliment getter. Uh, the performance is decent on it. Yeah. You know, it's not like a 12-hour fragrance, but I, I think it does a really good job. That is just, it's just timeless. It's just a great yeah. scent. Now, let me tell you what smells similar to that. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a Michael Jordan. It's oh, Michael yeah. Jordan legend, I believe. That's the, that's the, believe it or not, that's the most sold fragrance over the last 20 years. I that, read that the other day. That smells it's very close to this. Yep. So if you don't want to spend, you know, the 250, 260 for that bottle. You can get these. You can, you can get these well, you can get them on sale. Yeah. But uh, you can get the Michael Jordan one at like Burlington or TJ Maxx. But um, that is, it's just an amazing scent profile. It smells great. This is edible. It's a really good fragrance. Yeah, this yeah. is something like when you smell it, you're like, whatever that smells like, I would want to eat that. Yeah. Like if it was a dessert. So and that, that's, and, and to kind of rewind a bit, People confuse that, you know, we just spoke about Back to Black. Yeah. That's actually called Black Phantom. Yeah. Right? So a lot of people up. get those confused. Yeah, and you don't want to get those from, mixed from, up. Yeah, so, absolutely. Okay, so let's jump into the next one. Uh, we had to take a water break because, <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. tricky around here doing all this talking. So this, I know you love Georges Off. Yeah, um, Italian brand. Yep. That smells fantastic. Yeah. This, this has some freshness in it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That has some, like, laundry detergent yes. in there. Yes, yep. And Zhirzhoff is an Italian brand as well. Uh, very affordable. You can find these actually at discounters. Uh, I think I may have paid 150 for this bottle. And, and I mean, if you look, I've put a huge dent in this yeah, already. Yeah, that's got a nice. This is, this is one of the best, biggest complimentary getters that I have. Um, it's called Alexandria 2. And this does contain oud, right? Yeah. Oud, I, I found that oud is, um, helps with the projection. It really makes the fragrance just push, for lack yeah. of better wording. But this is a very clean fragrance. I've heard people actually compare this to uh, Creation E by Raja, which in my opinion, Raja Parfum is one of the most overrated brands that's out there. Very expensive. You're looking at five to $600 a bottle. Yeah. But what's cool about this one, this one leaves just like a really nice, uh, like a scent bubble, like a yeah. scent cloud. So it leaves yeah. a very nice trail. I've, I've had people chase me down and like, um, you know, gas stations like, man, what are you wearing? Yeah. And they take out their phone and put in their notes. <clears throat> but this is a very clean, man. I'm, For I'm, I'm oud, just... it's super clean. It smells like like a, the yeah. laundry dryer sheets. The neat thing about uh, Zhirzhoff as well, their performance is phenomenal. Okay. I mean, I, I you smell plenty of mine. They have some really uh, unique fragrances that I've never smelled. More yeah. than words is a really good rose fragrance they yeah. have. Forty knots is an all seasons based fragrance that they have as well, but. They actually have, so this is Alexandria 2. Mm -hmm. They have an Alexandria 3. So I'm tempted to actually check that out. I, again, I'm gonna sample first, but yeah, this is a compliment getter. This is probably, um, I'm a little OCD being prior military as well, but I track all my fragrances. Yeah. Like I put in Perfumo, I have my collection <laughs> there. You know, I pumped on Silver Oud yeah, today before yeah. I came in here. I pulled up Perfumo, I, I was like, yo, yeah. I gotta track what I got like on this. guy. I've worn this more in the last year than any fragrance I've had. And it, it's just a banger, bro. Like it is 
fall. Smells good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Super Great clean, fragrance. luxurious. It's not something you're gonna want to wear with like like I'm dressed in a in a wife beater, yeah. a trucker jacket, jeans, and Chelsea boots today. This is not something for that. This is something when you know I'm, I'm dressed in a nice suit, suit. Yeah, like yeah. in my work my work uh, get up for lack of better wording. Yeah. Yeah. So Very that's nice. Alexandria uh, two by Zerzhov. So this next one. Ah. Oh, is yes. this is this is this the one that I'm just ood ood ood. Is there patchouli in that? Uh, I, I didn't get it just off of that. Really so let quick. me tell you about this fragrance. So this is actually um, Oud for Greatness by Initio. They also have, so Initio, Parfums de Marley are owned by the same house. Um, I'm actually kind of pumped because they started carrying Initio and Oud, or, yeah. or excuse me, Initio and Oud. Initio and Parfums de Marley at our local uh, Dillard's. Dillard's. Yeah. So this is very popular fragrance, right? but it's very polarizing. And the first time I wore this, so I got this in a haul last year from uh, Joma Shop as well. Look at the bottle though. This is called beautiful the Black bottle. Gold Project. Yeah, yeah, beautiful bottle. Yep. Robert, I'm, I'm gonna be it's dead on it. I'm gonna be dead honest with you though. It's smelling good today. Yeah, so this is right before we had our daughter. I wore this for the first time, mm -hmm. but I went to, uh, I had to make a trip to Tulsa to see a client, but it was on a Saturday, so I was dressed in a sweater, very cold. I could not stand that fragrance when I wore it at first. Really? Some people will think this actually smells like bug spray. Right out of the gate. Think about that. But when this mm, dries it's down. Not that, it's not that bad. It's oud, not that bad. The first oud I ever bought was a designer oud, Boss Bottled Oud. And okay. I, I was like, what is this? Yeah. It reminded me of bug spray. But the thing about this is it does take some time to grow on you. Um, we were at Dillard's a couple days ago mm -hmm. and Someone had, he had sampled that for someone, and we could smell it by, I could smell yeah. it by the shoe aisle. But the neat thing about that, a lot of people will compare the dry down. You know, we talk about fragrances uh, that are very comparative. <clears throat> so you have Parfums de Marley has what's called Haltane, which rivals that as well. Yes. And Mansara, which is a great brand, they have um, Instant Crush. A lot of people say they have uh, the Baccarat Rouge vibe. That scent trail, that saffron uh. that pushes, right? The dry down, think about yeah, that. Yeah, just a little. I mean, Baccarat Rouge is a sweet cotton candy fragrance, but I get a lot of oud on that in the trail, right? I know. I do, I do. Okay, So with that, that's a, that's not a winter fragrance, or excuse me, that's not a summer, that's yeah, not a spring fragrance. I would not fragrance. wear that in the spring That's or heavy, cold, I'm talking 20, 30 degree fragrance yeah. in my opinion. And, and, and that's not a date night fragrance either. That's what I'm wearing right now, I would totally rock that. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so. What's next? Let's keep it in the same house. Initio, right? Okay. <laughs> Very polarizing fragrance as well. Beautiful bottle. The only thing I don't like about Initio, uh, aside from their Black Gold project, he'll, they'll issue a lot of the fragrances in the same bottle, like the same color. Like yeah, I it have makes three. It makes it very hard to know yeah. what is what. Right, because if you look here, the only way to wow. kind of differentiate fragrance, just they just the have lid. the, yep. So this is Initio side effect. Wow. What Tell do you think me about, about that? this one. So I think this smells like cotton candy. Right, right. Bubble gum. Right. Yeah, this cherry. Is, this is bro. That's yeah, cherry. There's cherry. Yeah. This is literally just sweetness in a bottle. It's yeah. Like Hint, a, let me like, check that out real quick. It's just a candy. Yeah, my wife and I. The kids were gone. It was Thanksgiving night. Like, yeah. and we just we had Thanksgiving dinner. My wife and I are sitting downstairs, cozied up, watching some movies. Christmas decorations are up. Yeah. We got the candles burning. I was like. I got a shower, threw on some sweats, and I threw this on. Mm -hmm. I let it dry down, bro. I didn't even make it through the night. I copped the bottle in Joma shop. And and this is a very expensive line as well. I think yeah. that retail for three fifty, four hundred. That's why Again, I get the clone. <clears throat> Joma shop. Uh, have a friend add you on Facebook on the fragrance marketplace. You can find this stuff for 120 bucks, trade up for it. But this is a very sweet fragrance. And the thing that I've noticed about uh, initial fragrances, I will say they're very linear. A yeah. lot of these fragrances, you're gonna have a lot of different like peaks and valleys yeah. throughout the day. That's that's what I like. The fragrance actually dries down, and uh, you know it takes its own character throughout the day. These are very linear, so yeah. this is gonna be like a strong cherry fragrance. It's good. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Decent. You bet. That's not one of my favorite ones. <laughs> yeah, I figured uh, as much. So next up, ah, uh, B six one two. Yeah, B six twelve by Nishane. Nishane. If you're getting into niche fragrances, right? Whoa, you feel that? Yeah, yeah. That's heavy. But if you're getting into niche fragrances, Nishane is a very good house to start with. They're a very affordable house. And they have some bangers. Um, some Nishane that are very popular is... <sighs> See, on, yeah. 
Ani is a very good fragrance they have as well. I can't even smell that one. <clears throat> so this is one of my mate, one of my wife's favorite fragrances on me. This is a, fuge, a fougere, almost like a barbershop fragrance. But there's nothing that smells like this. It's a very clean fragrance, but this could be an everyday winter fall fragrance in my opinion. You can't smell that? I can't even smell yeah, it. Yeah, man, let me smell that. I can't that's, smell that's heavy it. to me. Maybe I've just smelled too much today, but I can't smell it. That's very spicy. This is like a classic fougere, like almost a barbershop fragrance. But you yeah, got it. Yeah, kinda, I think so. Just a little could see that. This is this and 40 Knots from Zhirzhov are... Uh, okay, I got to say this about 40 Knots. Yeah. I, you sent me some and I just, it, it wasn't doing it for me. Really? Yeah, it just... Again, different perception, different performance, different I just didn't think skin. it lasted on my skin. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so. that's a good fragrance to wear when you're just running errands. Um, yeah, this is very, this is not intimidating at all. No, no, um, very crowd pleasing. some of the other ones. What do, we got, what, what do we got here? What, is, okay. what are these in the back? So this is a very slept on house. This is Marc Antoine Barras. Uh, let me make sure I'm pronouncing his last name. Marc Antoine Barras, but a lot of people, he developed a polarizing fragrance called Ganymede. Right? Yeah, I've heard of that. And he also has, I think it's called B683. We just saw B6, what was that called? B6, what was the Nishan A called? B612? Yep. Yeah. So he has, I think it's called B683. So this house, very expensive house, right? I think a 50 ml is going to run you like, this is a 30 ml, I think a 50 ml, and this is really hard to find mm -hmm. at discounters. Yeah. But I would also, I would also urge you to check out uh, Ganymede by him. Yeah. Ganymede is a very clean metallic fragrance. Uh, I like that one a little bit more. Ganymede's probably top five all the time yeah. for me, right? Okay, cool. so moving on to the next one. Let's what is this here? This is a... Wilhelm Parfumery. This is a popular bottle. Yep. Right now. I like that. This one's got a nice little buzz. This is a metallic fragrance as well. So this it is, is very actually... very metallic-y. Um, this has kind of gone a little viral. I'm not on TikTok. My wife was like, I watch fragrance video videos when I'm riding a bike, working, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> She saw this on a YouTube review the other day, and she's like, that's all over TikTok right now. Yeah. Um, but this, again, this is Faces of Francis by Wilhelm Perfumery. I have a few fragrances by them. Uh, I think it's called To My Father or For My Father mm -hmm. is actually another really good fragrance, but I would describe this. It's almost a little bit like a side effect, in my opinion. It's like a lighter side effect. It is definitely a lot lighter, yeah. but it's you get a lot of those Beautiful similarities bottle. in there. Yeah. I, I do love the design of the bottle. And That's being a 30 that ml, this, believe it or not. Being that this is such a viral <clears throat> fragrance, I'm definitely gonna make this little clip. I'm yeah. gonna make a reel out of this, yeah. because um, that is a very popular bottle right now. Yeah, and It there... smells decent to me. It's not, it, it's not one of those that just, I absolutely love and it stands out, but it's still a great fragrance. Unisex for sure. Yeah. Unisex definitely. for sure. This is definitely something that a woman could wear. Yeah. I, I, and just to kind of recap, so I would say Eau de Jour is unisex, Ardent for sure. Um, I could actually see my wife rocking Alexandria. Side effect is unisex. A lot of women like uh, Eau for Happiness by Initio. <clears throat> this, is, this is elegance. Elegance. That's so good. Elegance. Elegance, elegance, elegance. So this is by, <clears throat> from the makers of the viral Baccarat Rouge 540. Yeah. This is uh, Oud, Satin Mood by Mason Francis Kirchon. It's a great video. He uh, actually- Great scent. Bro, he was a perfumer. Um, you ever heard of Lamal yeah. by Jean-Paul Gaultier? Yeah. He was the perfumer on that, yeah. right? So he has a couple other bangers. We could have put, you love Grand Soir. So ambery, it's it's just pure amber. It's right. amazing. Right, but that's a great fragrance for fall as well. Um, but this is he also has <clears throat> to you know, don't get it twisted. He has oud, very similar bottle, and he has this is oud, uh, satin mood. He has oud silk mood as yeah. well. So Kendra actually, my wife Kendra, she got me this. Um, that's so good. A sample set, and I wore this on Christmas Day, 2021. And Kendra just loved this on me. So it's I, really, it's a great fragrance. This is an extreme yeah. as well. How much is a bottle of that run? Uh, this is really hard to find at discounters, but I think you can find, this is a 70 ml, which is weird. You're gonna see a 30, 50, yeah. or 100 ml. This is a 70 ml. Um, I think this retails for around in the mid threes. Yeah. But you could definitely find this at Joma Shop or fragrance discounters. There is a sweet note of something in there. Yeah. Um, Oud Satin Mood. Great That's fragrance. beastly. This great is great fragrance. Beastly. Yeah. Beastly. So two to three sprays max on this. And we're on our 
Man, we're on we're our on very the last, last one. one. So I don't have a full bottle of this. This is another banger from Homage, uh, Makers of Jubilation, uh, Silver Oud as well. They have multiple fragrances we could have thrown on this list, but I have not, I'm not paying $500 for a full bottle of this. This is a very barnyardy, funky oud. I did send you a sample of this. Yeah. This is called King Blue. Very misleading. Is that it's Opus not King a blue? Yes, yeah. Opus King Blue. This is a very misleading fragrance. It's not a blue fragrance or an aquatic at all, but this is for the street. Yeah, this uh, oudy. It's oudy. just funky. Yeah. This is, this is just very funky. But I would say the best wear to rock this uh, would be something that I had on last night. You know, we yeah. went to dinner, had on a black turtleneck, some Tom Ford yeah. pants, a nice trucker jacket, that some nice boots. Out. This is gonna, this is a rugged masculine fragrance, it is. bro. I mean, it's very musky. Thank you. And I grew up on a dairy farm in Pennsylvania. So <laughs> a lot it's of these very, are very barnyardy. It's very like, it's, it's almost like it's a dirty scent. But the dry down's kind of sweet on this, bro. I, I, <laughs> I'll have to take your work because I'm not spraying that on. But again, this is, <laughs> this is actually uh, their most recent release. Okay. Um, so it's very polarizing. It's had a lot of mixed reviews online. But again, let me go back to the fact, it's Robert. definitely you got, mixed reviews. You got to rock the fragrance. You can't let it rock you, bro. I can't rock that one. Yeah, yeah. But I love it. I'm, I'm so, probably going to get a full bottle so, of this. So to wrap up the video, what's your favorite out of all these? Because <clears throat> I know what my favorite is out of what I've smelled today. Well, I'm What's gonna, your favorite? Can, can I pick two? Yes. Because for the smoky, well. just like masculine, like hairy okay. chet, like I'm talking yeah. black leather jacket, yeah. biker boots. <clears throat> Not even close, man. This is my favorite. My my favorite right now is Silver Oud by okay. Mouage. But if I'm if I'm going on, um, you know, if I don't want to polarize anybody necessarily, if I'm looking for a safe bet, I would say uh, Back to Black from Okay. Kim. So for me, if I'm spending the money, which I rarely do, this one right here. Yeah. Arden. I actually would consider buying this. This yeah. is a great bottle. This the rose. Oh, dropped could, the little thing. No worries at all, the man. The rose in this. Um, and that's Ardent by Bodicea the Victorious, yep. That's, that's great. Say it again, what's it called? That is Ardent. So the cool thing about Bodicea the Victorious, they always list, you know, they have a really cool, you know, obviously the lid on this bottom, there. but Bodicea the Victorious, this is Ardent. And it's, the juice on this is just aged yeah, so beautifully. Great. Yeah, Uh Next up, my second favorite. Oh, I knew this, Black Phantom. The stuff right here? Yeah. I can wear it any day, every day. Great fragrance. Absolutely, absolutely. Eric. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to come over Absolutely. here and do this video. We're gonna have another video with Eric here soon. These are some great fall fragrances. Mm -hmm. I think the main takeaway is to sample as much as you can or as many of these as you can before you invest in a full bottle because some of these were upwards of three to $500. So oh, yeah. it's a significant investment, but you gotta realize you're getting something that's gonna last all day, every day. Great performance, great value, great smell. And most importantly, no one else is gonna have the same smell as you. So I think that's a major takeaway. Yeah, and the most difficult, like the bad thing about owning 350 niche fragrances is like you saw, you know, we're getting ready to go out last night. It's hard to night, choose. Bro, but I love it. I, I, <clears throat> it's something I look forward to every day and just, you know, sitting here yeah. in the office and yeah. some of this stuff just takes you to a place and puts you in such an yeah. amazing mood, man. Very nice. I have a lot of good memories associated with each one of these fragrances. So guys, that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed these 14 fall fragrances for 2023. Eric, any last words? You gotta wear the fragrance. You can't let the fragrance wear you. It's all about confidence. We'll leave it at that. <laughs>